By the way, did you see the Iowa caucus yesterday? Who came first? Trump. Who came second? DeSantis. DeSantis. Who came third? Nick Haley. Haley. Who's the only person that didn't do any podcast? V- well, Haley. Did it? Haley didn't Haley do any didn't podcast. Do one she podcast. just doesn't go talk. And by the way, check this out. Vivek, yep. who nobody knew as of two years ago, yep. who nobody even you know thought about like who Vivek was. You didn't sit there and think, who is this guy? This guy's going to run for president? He went from zero to two million followers on Twitter with billions of online view, and he was constantly meeting with others. A star is born for the Republican Party, by the way, just so everybody knows. The future looks you bright. You can for sit there and say whatever you want. The left would love a star like, uh, like uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. By the way, on, on the left— the star is who? Say, say AOC. Say if you think. I, I think AOC is a star for uh, the for socialist Gavin left. Newsom. I think it's far left, but I think Gavin Newsom is a yeah. star. Star for the left, of 100%. right? But even a Gavin Newsom, in my opinion, is not the level of a star as a Vivek no. is for the right. I, not at all. There's two different people. So, I agree. so Rob, let's talk about something here. Last week, out of nowhere, on Friday, President Trump put something on Truth Social. If you can put this up. And then we can go through a couple of the tweets and I'll, you know, speculate on why I think that happened. But if you want to put up what the president said about uh, uh, about Vivek last week on Truth, I think that's what it is. Vivek started his campaign as a great supporter, the best president generations, et cetera. Unfortunately, now all he does is disguise his support in the form of a deceitful campaign tricks. Very sly, but a vote for Vivek is a vote for the other side. Wow. Don't get duped by this. Vote for Trump. Don't waste your vote. Vivek is not MAGA. The Biden indictment indictment against his political opponent will never be allowed in this country. They are already beginning to fall MAGA. So now, what prompted this? I went out and I saw Vivek's tweets. And I noticed Vivek tweeted. By the way, this this came 50, 45 minutes or 50 minutes after a tweet by uh, uh, Dave Smith that Vivek retweeted. Did you see the tweet by Dave Smith? So go to no. Dave Smith's tweet. Our friend Dave Smith? Dave Smith is a stud of a guy. So Dave Smith posts something, but he's not a Trumper. No. He's not MAGA. So Dave Definitely Smith not. posts something uh, on Twitter. I hope he doesn't tweet 75 times a day where we can't find it because some guys <laughs> no, tweet Dave's so a busy many guy, times. Man. No, no. How many tweets do you see a day? Do you see it? Uh, uh, oh, so you'll find it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Whatever last week was, uh, Friday. What is Friday? Can you give the 12th. date? I think it was Keep 12th. going. Go a little, a little bit little back. Bit go one it. more back. Go one more back. Go one more back. So Dave Swift said something yes last week. Uh, go one more. Go one more. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, man, you got to find a tweet. Keep going. There's the 11th. Uh, is that 11th. the one? Now, now you're back. So yeah. so anyways, he, he posts a tweet, and in the tweet, he says something about you know, uh, uh, here's what I believe in. I believe uh, Nikki Haley is the worst candidate Choice, we've yeah. had in many years, you know, and he's just going and calling out everybody, right? And he thinks, you know, uh, v- uh, Vivek is the best one out there to get, et cetera, et cetera. But then he also says, and I will never vote for Trump because Trump's drama or something like that, right? So Vivek retweets that. Oh, man. So when you retweet that, if you can find it, Rob, Vivek retweets that. And to me, that's that's the, a retweet 45 minutes before Trump tweets what he tweeted on Truth Social. And I believe that's what started. Now, I may be wrong. I'm purely speculating on what I'm hearing. But to me, let me just read the tweet. And Vivek tweets so much, you got to go it's back. Crazy. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, on, I'm <laughs> going like this. It's still 24 hours. Wow. So let me see what I. So what is He's the date busy. again for that? Give me the That's date again for. Twelve is Friday. Uh, while I'm finding this, g- can you guys give some commentary here? While yeah. I'm well, let's it? let's. The breaking news is that obviously Trump won Iowa. Yeah. And Vivek has officially dropped out of the race. Yeah. <laughs> and wisely so. Okay. So everything. Listen, this was inevitable. Because Vivek, as much as we think he's a stud, he's been on the program multiple times. We've had a relationship with the guy. He's amazing. At some point, you're going for the king. And if you shoot for the king, you better not miss. And he's been trying to waffle and align himself with the MAGA movement and America first. But the, but Iowa was the first time that someone had to cast a ballot. Mm-hmm. And if Trump, over the weekend, was like, all right, I see what you've been doing. You've been aligning yourself with my team this entire time. Respect. Thank you for this. But at the end of the day, he's running against Donald Trump. He's running against Vivek. And he basically put the nail in the coffin for Vivek. So we all know that most people that like Trump, MAGA, there's some alignment with Vivek. We all know that. Mm -hmm. 
But at the end of the day, he's trying to take Donald Trump's job. Yes. At the end of the day, you're so 100% right. It took one simple tweet, whatever the. I uh, found it. Here okay. you go, Rob. If you whatever want to play happened, it. Whatever happened. Yeah. But Vivek is now out. Yeah. Is this the. Uh, this is the one. Yeah. So if I was a Republican caucusing in Iowa, I would 100% support Vivek, and it's not even close. DeSantis is a war hawk and a coward. War hawk coward. I will never forgive Trump for his appointments and his COVID policy. Nikki Haley is the worst human in America. Oh, There's wow. really no debate. I disagree with Vivek on Mexico and China, but he's head, his head, his, he's his head, head and shoulders. His head and shoulders, uh, the, the best, best Republican. Republican. Yeah, plus, he does my show. LOL, <laughs> right? Fine. And so Vivek retweets this. The most important sentence here is what? I will never sup- forgive, forgive Trump, Trump for his appointments and wow. his COVID policy. And you retweeting it is a form of... Yeah. Of an endorsement, and to Trump, who reads everything to see where you are, mm-hmm. this would upset the hell out of somebody like who's wired like Trump. So then Vivek comes out and he gives love to Trump and says, "I'm probably going to be campaigning. I called president. I told him I endorse you, and I'll be in New Hampshire with you. So you know what role he's playing next. And the president had good things to say about him, and uh, Kerry Lake. They had good things to say about those two. About Kerry Lake. About dude. And listen, say what you want. I watched the entire. Uh, the post win caucus, bro. You cannot compare him to Joe, Joe Biden, and I'm not. I'm saying this with all sincerity. He doesn't like. It's sad to watch. I hope everybody realizes that they got duped into voting for this guy because he was the lesser of two evils. He came up there. He was professional. He was cordial. He said, "Yo, he said nice things about Ron. He said nice, thing, nice things about Haley, uh, Nikki Haley. He he congrat. You know, he said. Can you play this clip about what he said about Vivek, and then play Vivek's clip as well. Yep. Go ahead, Rob. I also want to congratulate Vivek because he did a hell of a job. He came from uh, zero and he's uh, got a big percent, probably 8%, almost 8%. And that's uh, an amazing a job. They all did. They're all very smart, very smart people, very capable for, people. You can pause it and go to the next one, Rob, and see Vivek's video if you have it. And the star is born with Vivek. There's no question 1, about it. 1,000%. Yeah. And guess what, though? He has to realize that right now, and I'm pretty sure he's going to take it because, you know, he has his own money. He has, he has a strong backbone. That swamp, that left, that establishment, they're going to start as of right now. They're going to be on top of his, his ass. Go ahead and play. Because they don't like him. He speaks the truth. Go back a little Just bit. Candidates in. Go back. Yeah, sometime it does that. As I've said since the beginning, there are two America First candidates in this race. And earlier tonight, I called Donald Trump to tell him that I congratulated him on his victory. And now going forward, he will have my full endorsement for the presidency. And I think we're going to do the right thing for this country. Some people were unhappy, by the way, when he did that. Yeah. FYI, his wife is also very well spoken. She's a surgeon, by the way. She's like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's very smart and very well spoken as well. Where does she, do you know where she's at? Is she anti MAGA or is she? No, what do you mean? It's his wife. No, I'm saying Vivek's wife. wife. Yeah, well, I'm saying is is Vivek's wife, is she pro Trump? Does she like She does what Vivek tells her to do. Oh, well, I mean. Vivek's the leader of the household. Go ahead, Adam. So, just a couple talking points. It's official, guys. The Trump train has left the station. This was the first of what we're going to be seeing over the next few weeks, few months, the Republican primaries. Um, Trump's running away with this thing. Next up is New Hampshire. Nikki has a slight chance there. But with Vivek dropping out and endorsing and stumping for Trump, it's over. Ron's got no path to the presidency. It's over. His only shot was in Iowa. He's not winning New Hampshire, and he's certainly not winning what's third in South Carolina. And by the way, Trump Nikki's didn't eight. win Iowa. I think Ted Cruz won Iowa in 2016. Thank you. I was just going there. Thank you, PBD. This became the highest ever winning percentage for a Republican primary candidate wow. ever. Donald Trump, in 2016, to put in perspective. So what they say in Iowa is that if you win the evangelical vote, you win Iowa. Two-thirds of Iowa caucus voters are evangelical. So in uh, twenty uh, in year two thousand, George W. Bush won it with forty three percent of the vote. Trump just crushed that with fifty one percent of the vote. Okay, in Iowa, Trump's dominating. So uh, to look at what's going on in Iowa right now, understand a couple different things. The DNC, you talk about Biden, the Republican. We all know that Biden is a weak candidate. Oh. Who is not weak? Is the DNC? They are shrewd. They are slick. They know how to play the game. Yeah, they know they how to cheat. In 2016. Yeah, it is very naive of you to just think they're cheaters. 
It's not, so, not, no, not, not you. They'll stop at I'm anything. Saying, I'm saying to anyone yeah. out there, if you just think they're cheating, you're being naive. They have grassroots campaigns. They're organized. They get out the vote. Do weird things happen in elections, especially with mail-in ballots of during course. COVID? But look at every election since 2000. It's been a nail biter. It's the it's as we used with our friend the other day. It's uh, ignorant and naive to just think they're cheaters. Their DNC don't play. The fact that Joe Biden is even re remotely in the mix just shows how strong the DNC is. But that's not the point. They're trying to paint Donald Trump as, as MAGA extremists and the MAGA base as extremists. The DNC chair, Jamie Harrison, okay, he said that this is the most far-right extreme MAGA party ever. I would argue that it's exactly the opposite. They're extremists with support for Donald Trump. If you look at the exit polling, Iowa supporters about their candidate. How extreme are you about your candidate? How enthusiastic are you about your candidate? 50% Donald Trump. Extreme. DeSantis, 23%. Nikki, only 9%. Nobody's bought into Nikki. And 82% of Trump voters said they have made up their, their mind. mind. They're not going anywhere. Yep. So they have extreme loyalty to Trump. I don't mob you guys, Patrick, but nothing made me nothing makes me happier, especially last night, because of everything that's happening, is watching uh CNN and MSNBC and all those loser shills from Rachel Maddow to Joy Reid to Jen Psaki, the ginger swindler, just losing <laughs> their minds. I'm not I'm, You want to play to Joe Reid? Please do because by the way, I don't watch I don't watch porn. That is Better than any porn I've ever seen, and it's it started. And this is this the one where Joy Reid uh, says that uh, what's it called? Nikki Haley lost because of guess what? You're never gonna guess. Play this. Racism. Let's Play see this. it. Okay. New Hampshire. And I think to the point there. that you made, Steph. I mean, it, it's the elephant in the room. <laughs> She's still a brown lady. Oh, Jesus. Christ. That's got to try to win in a party oh, that is gosh. deeply anti immigrant and which is a parted blonde the notion wig. That you what can are you say talking immigrants about? are poisoning the blood of our country. Look. She's getting, you know, birthered by Donald Trump. Um, and I don't care how much the donor class likes her, which will ramp up a lot, the better she does in New yes. Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still yeah. a challenge. <laughs> I don't see Some how so she say, becomes yes. the nominee yeah. of that party yeah. with Donald Trump still around. I can't picture it happening. Maybe it could happen. Ron DeSantis' only argument for staying in it is he's the white guy that he can, can still make the appeal. Quick, I have so, a pause right there. I have a question a for her. Argument. If she hates Trump so much, why did she go get Trump's hair? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious, man. Like, can you, know, you have a million different yeah. options on a different you hair to have, and you get Trump. Look at Trump's picture below. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it's, you got Trump's hair. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh. there's no one a bigger closet Dude, supporter of Trump than so you. Guys, you're and, amazing. And this is cultural appropriation at the highest level. Yeah. Exactly. Oh this is what they're God. talking God. about. Oh, my gosh. That, 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 so that jacket. Is Looks like a white professor I had in college 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah, but no, but notice how it has. Listen to me. They're already starting. She's a spy. It's race. It's mag. By the way, you, when when people say it's a mag extremist, you know what the word magus, the the abbreviation is, make America great again. When did that become such a racist? Yeah. Wait, you want to make America great again? You Nazi, you piece of shit. By the way. All these people better bow down and kiss Trump's feet because now, now they're relevant again. Now, for the next four years, if he wins, they're going to have something to talk about because now nobody watches you. Nobody cares. Now all those green-haired, crazy, screaming, oh, the world's over. Now they have something to yeah. watch because guess what? We're back to a racist country well, and we're back to the end you, of the Vinny. world. I want to say that. Yeah. We're back. One of the weakest words in the English language in America today is racist. I love it. Yeah. I remember when that used to actually mean something. I remember when I heard they were racist, I was like, oh shit, the racists are here. The KKK's here, the neo-Nazis are here. They're here, the racists are here. It's the most watered down weak word in America today. It means nothing. People shout it, it's the, it's the boy who cried wolf, it's the boy who cried racist. At this point, and a lot of us fell for it in 2016. Donald Trump, he's racist, he's yeah, racist. Yeah. Well, Nobody's falling in for it, especially you, while what, you stole Trump's wig. Adam, don't say, Adam, yep. uh, I love you to death. Do not say nobody's going to fall for it. I am still curious to see because you're, they're, they're starting it already. All they're going to do is go back to their old playbook. Because, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping. And if you're listening out there and you are, you know, some people are, you are far left. Some people are far right. If you're on that left. 
Don't buy into the bullshit, okay? He's not racist. This isn't a racist country. Yes, there's some racist people down in Arkansas. You're going hey, to hey, 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 Listen, hey. yeah, you're going to find them. But the majority of us, we're trying to get better and, and yeah. go past all that bullshit. Stop taking us backwards and wake the hell up. Can we, you can know, we talk about, if, Tom, if you, did you want to add something? Yeah, very simply. If you want to know what Trump derangement syndrome looks like, that's what it looks like. That's exactly yeah. that is it. That is what a deranged argument looks like. And mm -hmm. that is where the phrase Trump derangement s syndrome came from. She has Maddow, too. It's, when Maddow it's her and Rachel Maddow that don't know what to say. So they say things like that. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you know what? Let me tell you, though, Tom. Honestly, I, as much as I want to say, of course, they still have a, a very loyal audience that's going to agree with anything they say. I don't think they have the kind of credibility that they once had. I think mm -hmm. it's hurting them. By the way, Nikki Haley. Here's what Nikki Haley does in her acceptance speech. Rob, do you have a clip of Nikki Haley when she gives a talk and she says, what we learned here, <laughs> that it's, it came down to two candidates is what it came down. I'm like, what, what two candidates? You were third <laughs> place. I listened yeah. to her speech and I'm thinking to myself, like, is the audience is screaming as if she won. Rob, you got a clip that I just texted you. If you can play that one that I sent you. By the way, here's some of the things that she said. I just want to tell you what she said in her speech. Vinny, did you listen to her speech or no? Did I, I didn't. I didn't watch the ending of her. I, I heard you talk about it. All right. So but, let uh, me tell you. Let me I tell you what wait. she said. Let me tell you what she said. So I was not expecting her to say this, but she said this. So some of the words. Okay. She trashed Trump. She said Trump and Biden are both 80 years old. They put our kids in debt. They don't have a vision for our future. They don't have a vision for our future. America deserves better. Our campaign is the last hope of stopping the Trump-Biden nightmare. And she goes on and on and on. Go ahead and play this clip here. Watch this. this if you, it. I'm telling you, if you listen to this without knowing the numbers, you would have thought she won. Go ahead. New Hampshire, in South Carolina, and beyond. I can safely say, listen to this. Tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two-person race. You're third place. Yeah. What when the hell are you talking about? This is what's called a spin job, guys, in yeah. politics. Oh my God! Think about it. Seventy million dollars <laughs> later. But, but, but here's what I'm saying: the donors can't be this dumb. <laughs> donors who have money. You made your money because you're smart. You busted your ass. You can't be that blind to see this and say. What are we doing giving this person money? Yeah. You know how bad the score was? The score isn't you lost by a field goal can I, or a touchdown. Can I ask you a question? You lost by five touchdowns. <laughs> a couple things. <clears throat> a couple things. I reacted the same way to this. So I went to things that sometimes are inconvenient to look at, the damn numbers. And what was uh -huh. interesting is all the polls leading up to this had her three points ahead of DeSantis. Every poll I looked at. Everything that was lined up, the only one, and these are all polls that were through the 13th, the 14th, the 12th, and the 11th. So these are polls happening PBD up to the minute. So instead, wait a minute. She wasn't second place in Iowa. That's what all the polls said she would be. She ended up Those almost polls. three points polls. behind DeSantis. But this is what she was saying. She is talking to DeSantis when she says that. When she says it's now a two-person race. You want to know why? Because she has 2X, actually 3X the polling in New Hampshire over DeSantis. Can I ask you a question? Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. And South Carolina, we'll get to this in a minute. What she was saying is that DeSantis is gone. That's what she was trying to say there. Iowa made this a two-horse race. In other words, DeSantis didn't get close enough that his donors and campaign mm -hmm. can keep going. That's what she's trying to say there. He's gone, and now it's a two-horse race. Me and the guy that trounced everybody. If you're, if you're a donor. Did you just forget Trump. Trump's name for a second? Oh, yeah, DJT. Trump. Exactly. DJT. So <laughs> now check this out. Let's go to this. I got something to say to you, Nikki Haley. And Rob, be ready with the, uh, the graphic. That's one Here, we go, one dead tree. Here we go. Here we one go, dead guys. tree in Here his hand. Go. Buckle one up. Dead tree. Vinny, buckle up. Haley has got 4X on DeSantis. Tom, South is that Carolina. the chart you want him to show? Yep. So okay. Haley's got 4X DeSantis in South Carolina. But Trump has almost 3X Haley. And that's her home state. Let me tell you a story about home state. This is the 2000 election. Gore is from Tennessee. If he wins his home state, the Supreme Court doesn't have to weigh in on 
Florida. Look at this. If he had won his home state, he wins the president. So you're saying Nikki Haley is Al Gore. Nikki Haley's Al Gore. She's sitting here with this inconvenient truth. You're talking about a two-horse race, and you're not even leading your home state. So it's better off to drop out now instead of being embarrassed when New Hampshire comes around your own home state. I want to know what her donors and the strategists in the RNC are saying. Hey, Nikki, you, you know, you, you don't even have a bounce coming. And just let me get to South Carolina. I'm going to win. You don't have a bounce coming. Trump has got you 2.5 to 1 in South Carolina. What do you, what do you okay, think? So, I- so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.